I'm Rob Bear, and today I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about playing Age of Sigmar with the new General's Handbook. And we're live from the Long War Beats Laboratory with the Age of Sigmar boot camp, basically. Like, I'm going to show you what you need to know about playing Age of Sigmar, just the basics, and maybe some of the supplements and things that you might be interested in picking up to help accentuate your game of Age of Sigmar. Now, I know some of you 40K players out there, you're like, yo, Rob, what's going on with your channel? Why are we getting all this Age of Sigmar content? Well, they're rebooting it, and there is no, we're not taking away from 40K. Don't get it twisted. There's, you know, there's going to be plenty of 40K content. I got, I got a special unboxing uh, for a digital version of a really cool book that will be dropping here soon. And for those of you that are like, hey, I can't get enough of, the, enough of this Age of Sigmar, I'm really excited. My friends are playing it. Yo, I'm hearing good things about this competitive side. What do I need to know to get started? Well, first off, there isn't much to know. It's a four page rule book. Like, it doesn't get much simpler than this. If you pick up the starter set, which is basically right here, uh, the good friend of the, uh, of the Spiky Bits Network, Felix, painted these guys up. They're not completely finished, but that's not the point. The point is that we have some painted miniatures to put on the table and show you basically how to play Age of Sigmar. That's the, that's the important side, right? You like this cat like reflexes right there? That comes from years of uh, cats trying to jump on tables and uh, knock my miniatures off or get up on top of things when I'm painting them and they know better. They know better. Anywho, <laughs> so we got painted miniatures. Now the rules are four pages long. Super easy. Now a lot of people are like, yo, that's not my cup of tea. That's not enough rules. I, I can't really dig that. Well, think about this. How many rules is a game of checkers? How many rules is a game of chess? How many rules is the ancient Chinese a game of go right you got literally people that spend their whole lifetimes mastering these games and it's literally maybe four pages worth of rules right so just think about that for a minute before you judge the age of sigmar book by its cover there's actually a lot of intricacies and opportunity for tactics that you might not be ready for and you might not see coming because you know age of sigmar is inherently different from 40k right so there is that so just keep that on your back burner now if you pick up the starter set which is a great buy it comes with this kind of hardcover cardstock pdf uh, printout i guess full color which is kind of nice of the rules themselves so you got that right so that's step one if you don't like these factions you can always play with the existing models whether they're square whether they're round base it doesn't matter it's all good in the hood it's it all goes by measurements okay and then the second thing you might want to pick up and it isn't quite out yet but next week the uh, General's Handbook will be coming out. And then this is a $25 book. It's almost a necessity for most people because it's got your point values in here. And it also has um, some other rules on basically kind of um, being able to take special abilities and things basically by what faction you are or, what, or you know, what allegiance you, you um, I guess, will plant your flag to, you know, so to speak. So then also they have things which 40k players are going to be like, oh, that's a codex, or fantasy players are like, hey, that's an army book. They have things called battle tomes. Now, that's a hardcover book, and it's basically, you know, the normal size that we're used to. That's going to have specialized rules. It's going to have all your roar scrolls, but it's also going to have specialized battalion rules, which are like formations for 40k, um, just to kind of put it into perspective there. Then you've got, you know, uh, maybe some other equipment in here. Now, like the Sylvanas book was the first one to come out with specialized equipment. We hadn't seen that in the past. These ones don't quite have that quite yet. They may have some updates, but we'll see where GW takes it, takes us in that direction. Then another thing that you can pick up too, um, if you don't feel like spending the 50 or some dollars on the Codex books or the Battle Tomes, you can pick up the Grand Alliance books, which for the most part are a great value. Like this particular book right here, it's $35, but it has over a hundred war scrolls in it. So basically, if you want to pick up all the rules for your, you know, perspective uh, faction, that's a great way to do it. Or you can download them from Games Workshop site for free as well and put them on your uh, iPad or, you know, your Android reader, tablet, whatever you want to call it. They're all there. So you have several different options is basically how how far do you want to jump into it and have these items readily available to you? In games of Age of Sigmar, there are five phases, and that's pretty much it to the game. There's the hero phase, the movement phase, the shooting phase, the charge phase, and the combat phase. So 
pretty familiar to most people out there that have either played Fantasy or 40k. Nothing unfamiliar here whatsoever yet. So in the hero phase, you place spells or hero abilities. There is no dedicated magic phase in Age of Sigmar, so to speak. So the very first thing you do when it's your, your, the top of your turn, which each turn is a your turn and your enemy turn, which comprises one battle round. So there's no confusion about whose turn, if it's game turn, if it's player turn. Well, game turn is basically a battle round, and player turn, well, is their turn. It's the top or the bottom of the battle round. So it gets rid of a little uh, confusing nomenclature that w has come to kind of um, haunt the game, you know, through all of the additions, uh, both 40k and fantasy, so to speak. So jumping back to this, so you either play spells or hero abilities. And the best hero ability out there, I feel like, is something called Inspiring Presence, where your general basically says, picks a unit within 12, and says, hey, you're immune to battle shock for this turn until it gets around to the next hero phase, which basically makes it so that they won't lose models at the end of combat. Both sides have to check. Now, for, for the Stormcast guys, it applies to everybody with the keyword Stormcast. They're basically like Space Marines with they shall know no fear, for the most part, right? Chaos doesn't have that ability, so he would just say, hey, these guys right here, these Bloodbound dudes, well, you're immune to battle shock now. Cool, way to go. He would say everybody, <laughs> and that's just the way it is. Now, I don't have any casters in this starter army here, but just keep in mind that if something is a wizard, it can cast either Arcane Bolt or Mystic Shield. And what Mystic Shield does is add plus one to your save. Arcane Bolt uh, does D3 mortal wounds. So just some little things to go over real quick here while we're talking about it. Mortal wounds, you don't roll the hit, you don't roll the wound. They just straight happen. You roll to see how many you get or they'll tell you amount. And then they just get allocated out to your opponent. <laughs> so it's kind of like D weapons from 40k, but now on um, you know the bow, the bow and arrow age, I guess basically so to speak. Mystical shield adds plus one to your save. There's no invulnerable save. There's no you know cover save. There's basically plus or minuses to your save. Another important distinction to make if you're coming over from fantasy or you're coming over from 40k. So that aside, that is basically everything you need to know about the hero phase. Now we move on to the movement phase. And the movement phase is pretty simple. You just basically move whatever the distance is listed for their move characteristic on their particular war scroll. Now for these guys over here, they have a move of five. So we will move them up five. Now, two important things to remember that you can never move within three inches of an enemy. So you gotta always stay outside of three inches of an enemy and that's just, well, that's actually the, the, the big point right there uh, for the movement phase. Um, you can also add a run. So like, say you want to run, you don't have to wait till the shooting phase. You just go ahead and roll it D6 and you add it right to it. So I theoretically could have moved seven total inches this turn. Then it moves on to the shooting phase. I don't really have any shooting attacks to speak of that I know of, just looking at this uh, starter army here. If I did, it would be very easy to resolve them because unlike the older systems, both 40k and fantasy, you normally have to compare your, you know, two hit rolls uh, depending on, well, normally just hit two hit based on your weapon skill. So you have to compare that to a chart. Then you have to compare the strength of the weapon to basically the toughness of the target. So there's a little bit of math involved with Age of Sigmar, you just consult the war scroll, the appropriate weapon, which every weapon has a range and can be used uh, at some point if the thing is in range. So if you got a melee weapon in range one of an enemy, you can use it. If you have a shooting weapon in range of an enemy, you can use it during the shooting phase. So say I had a shot, I would just consult my data scroll with, or my war scroll with the particular entry, and I would say, oh, hey, I need a four to hit and possibly a three to wound. Now there's different characteristics, things like rend, rend is neg one to a save, and then damage. And that's where it gets a little a little tricky, and I'm going to wait to explain all of that until the actual combat phase when we do some actual rolling of the dice.
moving right along to the charge phase, uh, this one's pretty simple. You just say, hey, this unit right here, I'm going to charge with it. Um, we'll see the Bloodbound guys are going to charge it Stormcast. And I'll roll TD6. Ugh, I'd like to roll them flat. I rolled a 2, which surprisingly may actually still be okay. But just for lack of a better example, we will reroll that just because. And we get a 9. So there we go. We got a 9. We're going to get stuck in. Now, you probably notice you're like, hey, you didn't declare really a target. Well, the cool thing about Age of Sigmar is you just roll the dice and then you can decide kind of who you're going to go, going to go at. You might go at the, you know, the Lord Celestine over here, or you might go at the prosecutors uh, up here, or you might go, you know, at the, uh, the normal liberators. It just, uh, you know, kind of depends. But for this example, we're going to go straight in right here. So we got nine inches and this move has to get us within a half an inch of these models. Now, a little caveat here, normally bases don't really count in the Age of Sigmar. Um, they are just there to hold up the models, so to speak. But I think a good home rule, and they talk about this in the General's Handbook itself, is to just go ahead and count bases um, because that way you don't have beautifully painted minis going because you can get into situations where you can actually get on top of other models bases right and you don't uh, to tell you to be quite honest with you I don't want people putting their models on top of my models it's just you know there's more opportunity for paint chips and I just you know you just don't want your stuff getting all like roughed up basically like this uh, they have bases. Let's just use them, and they talk about that in the in the guide. You know that some tournaments may actually require that. So we've now have moved within a half an inch with everybody, and now we're going to actually perform some attacks. So the Blood Warriors have made it to air quotes combat oh, with the hammer guys over here. Now in combat, you know, or what it, the combat phase basically, attacks it don't differentiate between shooting and melee. Every attack has a range. These guys' range is uh, half an inch, or excuse me, an inch with their gore axes. And that's all they're armed with. So they all have to get within an inch of the bases over here and they can all swing. Now you might notice too, hey, there's guys in range here. So can I throw attacks on them? I'm, I certainly can. It's up to me who attacks where in the Age of Sigmar. Like I don't, I don't lose attacks for multi-charging. There is an overwatch. The initiative is based on whose turn it is. It's my turn. So I charged in. So I get to pick the first unit to actually uh, perform combat. Now, I could say I can roll with uh, this guy right here, my general, and he would also make it in. So now it's my choice of where I want to start, and I would start with the Blood Warriors. So that being said, you roll the hit. Um, there's no fancy smancy chart. You're just basically checking your war scroll here. So each one of these guys has two attacks. The champion has an extra one for a total of 11 attacks. So here is 11 attacks going on. Now we have to do, we have to distribute them. Um, oh, and actually the first thing we do is we pile in three inches. So these guys are all going to pile in kind of wherever I want them to get within that one inch to do some damage. Now I'm going to actually try to take out these hammer guys because they're the worst. So we're going to try to get in here on these guys and throw all of our attacks on there and hope that our leader uh, can can deal with the, the Lord Celestine over there, but I doubt it. All right, so here we go. To hit, I need full uh, threes actually on these guys, which is really middle of the road, which was great here because we got two, four, six, nine hits, which is pretty spectacular. Now we need fours to wound, which is middle of the road. Can't complain about that. And we got three, four of those. Wow. Okay. Well, that is what it is. So we got four right here and those are going on the hammer guys. So my retributor save is a four up. I, and each one of them also has two wounds. So we're gonna roll that and see what we get. So we got, whoa, we did, we did super good right there. Now, cool thing, uh, bad thing, <laughs> laugh slash cry. If these were the normal liberators, I could reroll this because Sigmar shield reroll ones, but they're not, they don't have shields, but they did pass 
uh, three of their four saves, so one of these guys takes a wound. Now, a cool thing about allocation is I can allocate it to anywhere in the combat. So, smart money is on allocating it to the rear so that I still get my attacks back and I'm not losing guys that are in range of attacks. There's no restriction on that. So the four steps of combat are roll the hit, roll the wound, roll your saves, and determine damage. And the reason, it seemed pretty cut and dry right there, but sometimes you can take, you have weapons that cause like two damage, for instance. If that was a two damage weapon and I failed to save, two would get through and, and kill him because he has two wounds. But it wasn't, so I'm okay. Conversely, there are things like Rend, which we talked about, which is neg one to your save, which would knock my save up to a five, whereas, you know, I might have failed some more normally that way too. And you can have damage that is D3, which would do D3 and could possibly do two or more wounds, which would splash through the squad. So keep those things in mind as well. Okay, so now it's the Sigmar player's turn to activate. This is a tic-tac system in combat only, okay? So in combat, you get to, you go, they go, you go, they go. So now I would say, hmm, well, you've already swung your swings here. I know that the Lord of Corn is gonna go on my Lord Celestine here. So perhaps the, the, the smart thing to do, smart money is to attack him against the Lord of Corn. Maybe rough him up a bit, maybe kill him, I doubt it, but in subsequent turns, you might be able to kill him um, in one round. So I'm gonna try to take him out here. So let's see what he can do. The Lord Celestin is pretty much a beast in combat, and speaking of beast, his little dragon cat mount also gets to attack. So there's two profiles on him. He gets three attacks at range two, which he is after he piles in, easy peasy. Three attacks that hit on three ups, so we got two hits right there good to go and they are going to wound on two up oh that's brutal so we got two hits right there and that's at neg one rend so that's one uh instance of where i would have to say just to conserve time normally you roll things all together that uh have the same you know to hit or to wound and also you know um rend profile or damage profile just so they get through this is damage d3 we're going to just roll them separate so the drake himself hits on threes and wound on threes so there's uh, three and also three more so lots of damage coming through on the corn lord he is going to have to Huh, he's gonna have to make some saves right here. So his save is a three up, which is okay. But this is Rend, okay, we, we talked about that. So this right here um, needs to be a, f a four up. And he's good, one long war, one regular. And back here, these are not Rend, but they do extra damage. So one got through here. So that was the dra uh, the kitty cat claws, as we, <laughs> the dragon cat, lightning cat. And that is just one straight up damage. So he's gonna take a wound. There's nothing he can do about that. He has a wound profile of six. So he's looking good. He, he's struggling. He's, you know, he's like, eh, whatever. No big deal. Um, <laughs> um, not, not, not worried about it right yet. So now it's, now it the cast turn, cast player's turn to activate. He would say, hey, let's do this. Let's get in there and get some action on, on him because, hey, um, we know that these guys swung. We know that these guys swung. And these guys are probably going to be out of the combat, so we're not going to worry about them right now. So he's going to go in and swing with his axe of uh, a furious corn uh, vengeance, just a normal axe of corn. He needs threes to hit with his three attacks, which pretty pretty good, I feel like. So there we got two hits. Now this is not taking any abilities or anything into account. There's you know there's there's formations and things that you can do to get extra uh, benefits, but we're not doing any of that. So there's two, um, and I needed a three to wound, so that's not gonna help me, but the six will help me because it's a, it is a rend of neg one in a D3. Mm. So you know that's gonna be good. Now, he has a special ability called a reality splitting ax. So at the end of the combat phase, if you wound somebody, um, and he was not slain on a five up or more, he can cleave him. So he, if he gets through with this this attack right here, it may do more damage at the end of the phase if we're doing special abilities and things. So it can, you know, always read your data scrolls. There's always cool stuff. So his save back, 
Uh, and a neg one is not going to make it, so he is going to take a wound, his first wound, and he may take additional wounds. Now, the four attacks coming through for his little uh, puppy, his little corn corn puppy right there. Bark, bark, bark. And that's pretty easy. They hit on fours, or hit on threes and wound on fours. And that is a big, one big reroll. And nothing happened there. So, now, we come to the end of the combat phase which basically there would be battle shock they're immune to battle shock because that was his command ability his command ability was that uh these guys would be immune he is not immune however nobody has died yet oh well the liberators have a not uh, not the liberators uh the retributors have not swung so there may be hope yet so each one of those guys has two attacks with threes to hit and the champion has an extra attack so those are going to come in hot right now and whew, they uh they definitely came in hot right there with a bunch of attacks and threes to wound not too shabby four wounds right there now here's the problem this is neg one rend these guys right here don't have that great of a save i mean it's, it's decent but it, it's not a neg one and those whew, that's not what you want to see a three a three and a two okay well so what happens here is each one of these causes two damage each one of these guys is two wounds so I'm gonna allocate it out I basically lose four guys boom I just lost four guys off that dice roll so those guys are dead now guys have died I have to battle shock over here and battle shock is basically you roll a d6 and Whatever the amount is, you add plus the guys that died. So this will be two plus four is six. Now, the question is, what is this Corn Lord's bravery? And I believe it's a nine. It is a nine. So I did not fail, and I will not take additional wounds on this guy right here. But you can see where if you lose a lot of guys, it can be very dangerous for the rest of the models uh, that are around it. You have to check for both sides. This isn't like in 40K or fantasy. You check for both sides regardless of who the victor is. Uh, this is combat. They basically flee. They re you lose guys, etc., etc. It's not necessarily dying. It's that they're fleeing and, uh, and running away. So this guy's immune, and this guy passed his battle shock test right here. So I think we can tell who's going to end up winning this fight right here. Now something I forgot to mention, definitely on purpose, was something called retreat. So you can actually perform a retreat move as long as everything gets further away than three inches from the enemy. And what that does is basically there's no fleeing from combat and getting run down like in fantasy or like in 40k. You have to physically move and there's no actual detraction to the models leaving. Um, there's no like uh, attacks of opportunity or anything like that. They just if they can make it they go However, they can't launch assaults or do any shooting um, You know in their subsequent turn So now sometimes you can and there's war scrolls and there's battalions and there's special rules and things that, that let you so in this particular instance <laughs> uh, Discretion is definitely the better part of valor and I would retreat or attempt to uh, depending on how it looked right here to get my guys the heck out of dodge so i feel like my five inches would definitely get that guy away as well as that guy so hopefully it would be my turn at this point and i could sweep in some reinforcements to tr in here to try to protect uh, my general and my um, semi-elite corn troop over here but chances are um, that wouldn't happen <laughs> now another thing that's very important to note is that remember how we talked about turns well so at the bottom of each turn, so a turn consists, or one game round consists of a battle round, which is one player A turn and one player B turn. At the top of the next battle round, i.e. turn two, where we'd be pretty much at this point, you roll initiative for each player. So the corn player would say, hey, I'm gonna roll initiative, and the stormcast player would roll initiative. Guess what? The stormcast player now gets to conduct his first game turn of the battle round two. So 
that being said, now you can see you can go double back to back turns. So in that case, because the Stormcast actually went at the bottom of the battle round, they would get back to back turns and quite possibly wipe this guy out by turn two. So a lot of competitive games, you have win conditions at turn three. Um, and you also have to turn conditions. Uh, well, the game's basically over by turn five in most in most of the six missions that are in the general's handbook. So keep that in mind. You really want to plan out your strategies um, with a hey, what happens if I don't go first at the next top of the next battle round? What happens if I do? Because those things will definitely come into play at this point. Um, you know, depending on how your dice go. Dice went south here, you saw it, but you know, there's not a lot of coming back from that. And that's why it's good to have a lot of troops on the tabletop. So those were the basics that you need to know about Age of Sigmar to figure out if it's the game for you or what you need to get up and running really quick uh, to jump into this really great new game that's, uh, well, it's, sw it's sweeping the world this summer. Well, that in Pokemon Go. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.